What's up, guys? I <coughs> just wanted to show you real quick. So this is Daffodil, a English Golden Retriever, and she has a double coat, right? An undercoat and a primary coat, the guard hairs. Now, I'm brushing a lot of this dead hair out of her, right? <clears throat> what I wanted to show is she has a few areas where there's hot spots, right? And when you, pull, when you comb that area out, you see this? See how it's like this follicle right there, right? And then there's like a bundle of hair, right? So they grow in bundles. So this is a little bundle of dead hair, right? That got brushed out. And that's what all of this is. You see those little... So each one of these is like a little bundle of hair. See that? A bundle of dead hair. What's up, Seisha? <clears throat> so when you get all of this out, you start getting all this cruddy stuff out of their skin, right? The scabby stuff. Because it's a change of the season. So that means... <clears throat> and I've already combed out her ears. And I've only gone through with the comb so far, right? Hey, good morning, Ruth. What's up, Seisha? So... I wanted to show you what um, the dead undercoat looks like. So here I was hand stripping a little bit, like plucking. The dead hair literally looks fuzzy. And see how easily it comes out in bundles? Look at that. So that's all dead hair. That's a dead undercoat from last season and it's all packed in there. So when we pull that out, now the skin actually doesn't feel so bumpy or grainy, it's smoothed out. And the coat, the live hairs that are left, they're shiny and smooth because this is all that brittle, rough hair that holds on to all that smell. So this is what we're doing, what I'm doing before the bath to clear the skin and get rid of a lot of this, you know, old underwear. So it's basically like like pulling, removing her old underwear before the bath. See that? See how easily it comes out? Right there. Right here as well. So just to save time, first I'm going to go through with the comb. See? Oh, that's a good one. See, look at that. This is like a dead follicle, and attached to it is a bunch of hair, like a bundle of dead hair. And back here, you're going to get a lot of that dead bundles of hair that catch, because the hair is longer back here. So that's what kind of causes them to feel itchy as well, because they got all that dead hair just packed in those pores, making the skin feel tight and uncomfortable. So a lot of times when you see dogs itching themselves back here, or they're chewing themselves back here, that's what they're doing. They're trying to get this stuff out. And <clears throat> just to show you, on her front legs, I don't know if you can see that, I'll bring it in closer. On her front legs, where I combed out a bunch of that, the, you know, those scabby stuff, and you see the, it was like packed full with hair. See, it came out here. There's a hot spot right there. And that's where the skin was just so packed full of all that cruddy stuff, right? Here as well. And it looks a little damp because I sprayed some antiseptic spray on it. See that? It's because all of this... Once I was able to clear all that out, now you see like the skin and it's smooth now. It's not bumpy and raw. It's actually smooth now. And what I sprayed it with is even if I spray antiseptic spray on it and you know, a nice solution, if all of this hair is still packed in that skin, it's not really able to really treat it or do anything. So. After we remove all that dead hair that's clogging those pores, then once, once, the, you can, once it can actually get to the skin, I'm using Curaseb antiseptic spray, and it's an it's a antifungal, antibacterial, anti-yeast. And now, you want to avoid the mucous membranes, like the nose, the mouth, 
his eyes, you know. You want to avoid those areas, but it's okay on the skin for topical treatment. Kelly says, we get a lot of greasy dogs. Do you spend the time prepping or do you go straight to the back? I prep. So just like if I sprayed this on the legs there, before clearing out the legs of all this dead hair, it, the pores would have been way too packed full of this dead hair and all the scabby, those dead follicles, you know? So even if I sprayed this on there, it wouldn't have really done any good. Now that I cleared the leg area out, right? And I um, brushed it all out and pulled all that dead hair out. Now the skin is clear and I can spray this on there and it's actually gonna treat the skin. Same idea with the back. If I don't brush out the dead hair, look at that. Oh my God, it just came right out of the skin. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. Oh, let me see if you can. See, this is like a little, a little seed almost. It's, it looks like a little seed. And look how far under that follicle, the hair, <laughs> that was all in the skin. Isn't that crazy? So anyways, by, by removing this, now when I give her a bath, the shampoo and the water and the conditioner can actually get down into the skin and treat the skin, condition it properly. But if I wash her without brushing this out, it would be like if I went home tonight and maybe just took this off, but you know, kept my undershirt on and my underwear on and took a shower in it. I took a shower in my dirty underwear. It wouldn't really do much good, you know? And then let's say I take my under, dirty underwear off after I get out of the shower. It would be better than not taking it off at all and just putting new clothes over it. It would be better than that, but you would get better results by removing the dirty underwear before you take a shower, right? All right. Now the tail. The tail is really thick, and so I'm gonna use a slicker brush to break it up first. Right, girl? That way I don't pull and tug on it too much and make her feel uncomfortable with the comb. And this is especially helpful during the change of the seasons, during these transition times, because their coat, so the skin gets its signal from the sun. Look at all that, right? So once the skin can tell that there's a change in sunlight, in the intensity and the duration of the sun, we call it photo periods, when the skin, when the dog's skin um, senses when the dog's body can can tell that there's a change in oh man the photo periods the, the the intensity and the duration of the sunlight then it that's the signal that it takes from the sun to start shedding to start releasing some of that dead undercoat uh, what's up spring spring s wood so man, you can feel you can feel the little dead follicles and stuff, you know, the cruddy stuff that was in the skin. But anyways, once it starts to change, once the weather starts to change, the, the season starts to change, then they go through a coat change so that they stay fresh. They have fresh new underwear for the new season. So that by the time winter comes in, you know, the colder season, they'll have their new fresh underwear, their undercoat grown in for, for the protection, see? So what we removed today, um, will be replaced by new underwear, new fresh undercoat, so that it'll be, it'll be there to protect her during the winter. And then um, during the heart of the winter, they say December 21st and June 21st, the longest and the shortest days of the year, you know, as far as sunlight's concerned, though that's the day where they, the shedding peaks, they, cut, they say that that's the peak shedding day. So when that happens, they, again, they're gonna start shedding. They're gonna start releasing um, the, the hair, right? The, the undercoat. So that during the springtime, we start seeing this again in the spring. That way they have a new fresh undercoat for the summer. And that's how they stay clean and fresh. Good girl. So first I go through with the comb. If it's really thick and the comb catches too much, then I break it up with the slicker brush first so it doesn't make her feel too uncomfortable. There you go. So we remove all this first. Good girl. And 
I've already gone through both front legs. Wow, you can see like the like powdery, like like little seeds, like little brown seeds almost coming out of the skin. And it, attached to it is like a bundle of hair, a bundle of dead hair, old dead hair. So each follicle produces about 12 hairs, one to two primary hairs, and then anywhere from like 17 to 12 um, secondary hairs, that undercoat, that fine hair that protects them. It's kind of like goose down feathers. You know how goose down feathers are for like protection, insulation, things like that, temperature control. So same thing with the, the dog's undercoat, the secondary hairs. It's kind of like the down feathers of, of a dove, goose or any kind of bird. What brushes do you use or like? So I'm using a Greyhound comb right now, right? I have just this, I don't even know, universal slicker brush, right? And then, okay. and then after I'm done with this, I like to go through real quick with undercoat rakes, just to, just to get some of that dead undercoat out, some more of it before the bath. The more I can get before the bath, the better results the bath is gonna give me. See, the more of this, oh wow, look at that. I don't know if you can see that little follicle right there, like little seed, pretty much, the root, of that, that dead root of the hair. Can you see those little brown little specks? So that's what I like to do. And then, after the bath, once I get her dry, and I comb her out again, and I'll probably use the undercoat rakes again. I like to finish with this little Furminator type tool, and this one is called Sure Grip, I think. But yeah, I like to finish with this just to, you know, get the rest of that undercoat out. Good girl, see that? <laughs> Alrighty, good girl. And it really does help them feel much better because all of that packed inside that skin makes their skin feel tight and uncomfortable and that's when you start to see the dog itch you know they start scratching themselves here with their back leg you know um they start licking themselves and chewing themselves and then when they start licking and chewing themselves especially like around here and back here you'll start to see the brown spots you'll start to see hot spots because their saliva has bacteria and when they start chewing themselves here to try to help get some of this dead hair out right but by helping, they're not really helping because when they chew it out with their teeth and, their user, and they use their mouth and lick, now the bacteria and the saliva causes that area to turn brown and you'll get a hot spot. But it's okay, even if you do get a hot spot, again, where did my comb go? You clear that area out, you know, you comb it out, and then you can also use your fingers and just kind of pull those dead hairs out clumps of it just comes right out, right? And then once the area is clear, you can spray that hot spot with antiseptic spray. And then after the bath, while she's still wet, I'm gonna spray those areas again and then dry it on her. And then it'll really help heal that area nicely. Alrighty. Nice. I'm working on like zero hours of sleep. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was last night, but I just could not fall asleep. Oh my goodness. And then I started just trying to breathe, you know, focus on my breathing. I just kept telling myself like, hey, breathe in, breathe out, you know, just focus on my breath, my breath. And you know, you can only do that for so long. And it's just like my mind started wandering, of course. And then I started thinking about things and you know, and then just kept trying to tell myself, you know, just, just relax, just sleep. And I just, for some reason, I couldn't fall asleep last night. And so then, around like two, three in the morning, you know, I used the restroom, and then I turned on some um, like sleep meditation, like sleep affirmations, and it kind of helped. I, you know, I could, there's like soft music and somebody, you know, doing like nice, oh, I'm sorry, girl, nice positive affirmations. And, but then that, start, that kept me up, because, you know, every time I felt myself kind of falling asleep, you know, the, the voice saying another affirmation would kind of startle me awake. Oh, man. And so, turn that off. And then, yeah, I just couldn't sleep. And instead of feeling, oh, wow. Oh, that 
that's a good one. Look at that. See that? See that? It's like a root, that dead root, right? And then all of this behind that, that was what was in the skin. So all of that was in the skin. See that? And there's like a little bundle of hair right there from that root. Anyways, um, yeah. It's crazy. But instead of feeling upset or frustrated, I just told myself, you know what? This is good. Because after today, after I groom this dog and I have another one to groom, I'm going to be really tired. And that means I'm going to get really good sleep tonight, you know? So just trying to <laughs> always stay positive. You know, I just feel like it's like, it is what it is, right? I'm not falling asleep anyways. Why be mad about it, you know? Let's just, let's just work with it. Okay. And I think that's what, um, it's also what's, uh, why it's so important to have work that you care about, that really matters to you. Oh, I'm sorry, girl. Because now that I'm starting to get into it, I'm working, I'm using my body, sweating, you know, it's like, yeah, it's like, I feel that rush of energy. Good girl, Daffodil. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. Wow. So look at that. Just slides right out of the skin. See that? Let me back in. See that? Crazy. So, oh, you're welcome, Spring. Spring S1. So yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm just gonna go through and finish getting her all combed and carted out and then give her a bath and then go through and dry her and then finish her up. See you guys. So I literally just got back from the bath from out of the shower. And so now she is towel dried and we just have to dry her up now. Dry her up and then kind of just shape her feet and she's done. So now is all the easy part. So. By doing all that prep work and combing out all that dead hair, right? See, I'm still catching some, but not much. But see, by getting all that dead hair out before the bath, check this out. Look at this. I got a trash bag full of it. See, this dense, brittle, smelly hair. It's all dead hair, right? Got a shopping bag full of it. By getting all of that out before the bath, now she feels so silky smooth and clean. She smells so nice, right? And she's gonna dry in no time. So before I dry her, what I like to do, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. So I like to file the nails, because while the nails are still wet, and I clipped them. So because I clipped the nails before the bath, they have a little sharp cut to them. But it's soft now because it's absorbed the water because the nail bed has been opened up by that cut. So now it's kind of soft, so it's going to file really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and file the nails before I dry her. And she's literally air drying right now as we speak. So it'll give her me a little more time to let her air dry. So the drying won't even take that long. Literally. Um, if, by following the steps, step one, build rapport, you know, <laughs> make sure she's okay with me and trust me. And then step two, the very first visit, oh my gosh, she tried to jump off the table. She tried to ta attack me a few times, <laughs> you know, try to like snap at me and everything, growling. That was our very first visit. Now, I mean, <laughs> oh my goodness, Mwah, we're good friends now. Anyways, um, so by, by building rapport, so she cooperates with me, she trusts me, and then prepping the skin by combing out all that dead hair, getting all that dander, the dead follicles out of there. Then the bath is no, it's so easy, right? And she, she gets really nice and clean. Look at how clean she is. Everything just feels smooth. The skin feels smooth. These hot spot areas that were kind of red and raw earlier, they're all nice and smooth and clean now. And so now we have a really nice, clean, smooth dog. And all we got to do is dry her up. But before I do that, I'm going to file her nails. So, you're okay, Daffodil. Good girl. Now, because the nail, 
like I said, it's already clipped. And it's, it's soft because of the water that soaked in that nail, that sharp edge. So now, literally just go through and smooth out the edges. Good girl. Wow, even this used to be a big ordeal. It was a huge challenge because she, she was scared and she didn't like it. Look at this. It's just routine now. Good job, girl. Very nice. Awesome. Good girl. I honestly was not expecting it to be this easy. This is kind of a surprise to me. <laughs> because this used to be such an ordeal. Seriously. She would uh, pull her feet away. She would tuck it under, spin. You know, try to like mouth at me. I mean, this was a real big challenge before, but now, not so much. It's awesome. So the same uh, task, the same activity that used to take a lot longer because I would have to work with her and calm her down and, you know, just kind of really work on each nail slowly and then calm her again. Now, it's not taking nearly as long because she's more cooperative, she trusts me now, she, she's gone through this process before, it's, it's more familiar to her, it's not so scary anymore. And now, boom, we're done. Good job, girl. Wow, that was easy, surprisingly. <laughs> wow, okay. That was awesome. So let me just towel dry her a little bit more, she's still a little damp. Girl. Okay. That was awesome, girl. I'm trying to lay the hair down as I'm drying. I'm trying to lay it down in the direction that I want it to lay. So when, she, when I first started drying, when she was soaking wet, yeah, I did kind of scrub a little bit to get all that water off. But now that she's just damp, I'm going to use the towel to dry her, but also kind of brush her as well, brush that hair in the direction that I want it to lay. There we go. So everything we do is with that end goal in mind, to have her hair laying in the angles that it should be laying to help highlight, accentuate her natural angles, you know, her natural beauty. Good girl. So even towel drying is not done aimlessly.
so now she is all dry. And even though I was combing pretty thoroughly, this is all I got out of her entire body. Isn't that awesome? Tanya, you need earplugs. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, it's just a hand dryer, though. But isn't that awesome? And now she's all dry and super silky smooth. Oh, my goodness. Like, look at this. Oh, like butter. Just goes through like butter. And she feels so soft and silky. Oh, man. Oh, your mommy's gonna love this. Oh my goodness. Even her ears, and right here, like under her chin, where it was smelling pretty bad earlier, had a really strong smell, gone. Don't, can't smell nothing. Well, it kind of smells like mangoes a little bit. <laughs> All right. There we go. And so I start with the hot air, and then I finish with the medium, the uh, warm air. And sometimes I'll go through with the cool air as well. But, you know, she's feeling really good and nice. So, but yeah, the, the medium, the warm air, blows a lot harder, a little harder than the hot air. So I like to turn it on the medium. And the cold air blows even harder. So then it kind of helps you know, separate those hairs, give them a really nice soft finish. So, um, I guess that's uh, one of the few times where it's a good thing that it blows harder. <laughs> you know, oh, man, this blows so hard. Well, in this case, it's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Why no HV dryer? Uh, I had one, the box one that I carried around, but it's just heavy and it's loud and it just, you know, causes a big mess sometimes. And so, you know, I just don't like carrying that big thing. I already have a big bag full of towels and all that stuff that I bring in. Another backpack and my table. I already have enough. And I want to bring, you know, bring everything in one trip. So that's why I like that hand dryer just put in my bag. And it doesn't even take that long, you know? Shoot, she's all dry now. <laughs> because of the prep. Because of all that dead hair I pulled out before the bath, she dried so easily and nicely. Tanya, beautiful doggy. Mine is the same but black. And eat will eat my face if I take more than five minutes to brush <laughs> And I don't even think about touching the nails. Oh, she was like that too. And, you know, the very first time when I was brushing her, she was like, you know, very vocal and just didn't like it. But now, you know, because she knows how good it feels now once she's all combed out and brushed out and she doesn't fight for her nails anymore. You know, it's just uh, building up to this. She wasn't like this the first few times. So anyways, that's how I dry her. And you see, every because I front load the process, I front load the work. I do all that hard, heavy work in the beginning by getting all of that dead coat out. Now, you know, the drying is easy. The nails are already filed. All I have to do now is just kind of shape up the, the pads and the paws a little bit, make them round, and she's done. She's good. Um, Amanda, oh, okay, I get that. Awesome. But yeah, see that? So now literally, um, I'm pretty much done. I just have to, you know, just kind of trim a little bit. Oh, you look so beautiful. Look at you, girl. Oh my goodness. Oh, the paws are so nice and round. You are so silky smooth. Oh my goodness, girl. Wow. Look at you. Oh my goodness, I almost fell. <laughs> look at you, Daffodil. So beautiful. Oh, I love you, girl.